Part One of the Libation Bearers, translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Morshead, eighteen forty nine to nineteen twelve. Dramatis Personae, Orestes, Chorus of Captive Women, Electra, a Nurse, Clytemnestra, Aegisthus, an Attendant, Pylades. The scene is the tomb of Agamemnon at Mycenae. Afterwards, the palace of Atreus hard by the tomb the libation bearers part one orestes lord of the shades and patron of the realm that erst my father swayed list now my prayer hermes and save me with thine aiding arm me who from banishment returning stand on this my country lo my foot is set on this grave mound and herald like as thou once and again i bid my father hear and these twin locks from mine head shorn i bring and one to inachus the river god my young life's nurturer i dedicate and one in sign of mourning unfulfilled i lay though late on this my father's grave for o my father not beside thy course stood i to wail thy death nor was my hand stretched out to bear thee forth to burial what sight is yonder what this woman throng hitherward coming by their sable garb made manifest as mourners what hath chanced doth some new sorrow hap within the home or rightly may i deem that they draw near bearing libations such as soothe the ire of dead men angered to my father's grave nay such they are indeed for i descry electra mine own sister pacing hither in moody grief conspicuous grant o zeus grant me my father's murder to avenge be thou my willing champion pylades pass we aside till rightly i discern wherefore these women throng in suppliants exeunt pylades and orestes enter the chorus bearing vessels for libation electra follows them they pace slowly towards the tomb of agamemnon chorus forth from the royal halls by high command i bear libations for the dead rings on my smitten breast my smiting hand and all my cheek is rent and red fresh furrowed by my nails and all my soul this many a day doth feed on cries of dole and trailing tatters of my vest in looped and windowed raggedness forlorn hang rent around my breast even as i by blows of fate most stern saddened and torn oracular through visions ghastly clear bearing a blast of wrath from realms below and stiffening each rising hair with dread came out of dreamland fear and loud and awful bade the shriek ring out at midnight's witching hour and brooded stern with woe above the inner house the woman's bower and seers inspired did read the dream on oath chanting aloud in realms below the dead are wroth against their slayers yet their ire doth glow therefore to bear this gift of graceless worth o earth my nursing mother the woman god accursed doth send me forth lest one crime bring another ill is the very word to speak for none can ransom or atone for blood once shed and darkening the plain o hearth of woe and bane o state that low doth lie sunless accursed of men the shadows brood above the home of murdered majesty rumour of might unquestioned unsubdued pervading ears and soul of lesser men is silent now and dead yet rules a viler dread for bliss and power however one as gods and more than gods dazzle our mortal ken justice doth mark with scales that swiftly sway some that are yet in light others in interspace of day and night till fate arouse them stay and some are lapped in night where all things are undone on the life-giving lap of earth blood hath flowed forth and now the seed of vengeance clots the plain unmelting uneffaced the stain and ate tarries long but at the last the sinner's heart is cast into pervading waxing pangs of pain lo when man's force doth ope the virgin doors 
There is nor cure nor hope for what is lost. Even so I deem, though in one channel ran earth's every stream, Laving the hand defiled from murder's stain, it were in vain. And upon me, ah me, the gods have laid the woe that wrapped round Troy, what time they led me down from home and kin unto a slave's employ the doom to bow the head and watch our master's will work deeds of good and ill to see the headlong sway of force and sin and hold restrain the spirit's bitter hate wailing the monarch's fruitless fate hiding my face within my robe and fain of tears and chilled with frost of hidden pain electra handmaidens orderers of the palace halls since at my side ye come a suppliant train companions of this offering counsel me as best befits the time for i who pour upon the grave these streams funereal with what fair word can i invoke my sire shall i aver behold i bear these gifts from well-loved wife unto her well-loved lord when tis from her my mother that they come i dare not say it of all words i fail wherewith to consecrate unto my sire these sacrificial honours on his grave or shall i speak this word as mortals use give back to those who send these coronals full recompense of ills for acts malign or shall i pour this draught for earth to drink sans word or reverence as my sire was slain and homeward pass with unreverted eyes casting the bowl away as one who flings the household cleansings to the common road be art and part o friends in this my doubt even as ye are in that one common hate whereby we live attended fear ye not the wrath of any man nor hide your word within your breast the day of death and doom awaits alike the freeman and the slave speak then if aught thou know'st to aid us more chorus thou biddest i will speak my soul's thought out revering as a shrine thy father's grave electra say then thy say as thou his tomb reverest chorus speak solemn words to them that love and poor electra and of his kin whom dare i name as kind chorus thyself and next whoe'er aegisthus scorns electra then tis myself and thou my prayer must name chorus who e'er they be tis thine to know and name them electra is there no other we may claim as ours chorus think of orestes though far off he be electra right well in this too hast thou schooled my thought chorus mindfully next on those who shed the blood electra pray on them what expound instruct my doubt chorus this upon them some god or mortal come electra as judge or as avenger speak thy thought chorus pray in set terms who shall the slayer slay electra beseemeth it to ask such boon of heaven chorus how not to wreak a wrong upon a foe electra o oh, mighty hermes warder of the shades herald of upper and of under world proclaim and usher down my prayers appeal unto the gods below that they with eyes watchful behold these halls my sires of old and unto earth the mother of all things and foster nurse and womb that takes their seed lo i that pour these draughts for men now dead call on my father who yet holds in ruth me and mine own orestes father speak how shall thy children rule thine halls again homeless we are and sold and she who sold is she who bore us and the price she took is he who joined with her to work thy death i guess thus her new lord behold me here brought down to slaves estate and far away wanders orestes banished from the wealth that once was thine the profit of thy care whereon these revel in a shameful joy father my prayer is said tis thine to hear grant that some fair fate bring orestes home and unto me grant these 
a purer soul than is my mother's a more stainless hand these be my prayers for us for thee o sire i cry that one may come to smite thy foes and that the slayers may in turn be slain cursed is their prayer and thus i bar its path praying mine own a counter curse on them and thou send up to us the righteous boon for which we pray thine aids be heaven and earth and justice guide the right to victory to the chorus thus have i prayed and thus i shed these streams and follow ye the want and as with flowers crown ye with many a tear and cry the dirge your lips ring out above the dead man's grave she pours the libations chorus woe 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 let the teardrop fall plashing on the ground where our lord lies low fallen cleanse away the cursed libation stain shed on this grave mound fenced wherein together gifts of good or bane from the dead are found lord of argos hearken though around thee darken mist of death and hell arise and hear hearken and awaken to our cry of woe who with might of spear shall our home deliver who like ares bend until it quiver bend the northern bow who with hand upon the hilt himself will thrust with glaive thrust and slay and save electra lo the earth drinks them to my sire they pass learn ye with me of this thing new and strange chorus speak thou my breast doth palpitate with fear electra i see upon the tomb a curl new shorn chorus shorn from what man or what deep girded maid electra that may he guess who will the sign is plain chorus let me learn this of thee let youth prompt age electra none is there here but i to clip such gift chorus for they who thus should mourn him hate him sore electra and lo in truth the hair exceeding like chorus like to what locks and whose instruct me that electra like unto those my father's children wear chorus then is this lock orestes secret gift electra most like it is unto the curls he wore chorus yet how dared he to come unto his home electra he hath but sent it clipped to mourn his sire chorus it is a sorrow grievous as his death that he should live yet never dare return electra yea and my heart overflows with gall of grief and i am pierced as with a cleaving dart like to the first drops after drought my tears fall down at will a bitter bursting tide as on this lock i gaze i cannot deem that any argive save orestes self was ever lord thereof nor well i wot hath she the murderess shorn and laid this lock to mourn him whom she slew my mother she bearing no mother's heart but to her race a loathing spirit loathed itself of heaven yet to affirm as utterly made sure that this adornment cometh of the hand of mine orestes brother of my soul i may not venture yet hope flatters fair ah well a day that this dumb hair had voice to glad mine ears as might a messenger bidding me sway no more twixt fear and hope clearly commanding cast me hence away clipped was i from some head thou lovest not or i am kin to thee and here as thou i come to weep and deck our father's grave aid me ye gods for well indeed ye know how in the gale and counter gale of doubt like to the seaman's bark we whirl and stray but if god will our life how strong shall spring from seed how small the new tree of our home lo ye a second sign these footsteps look like to my own a corresponsive print and look another footmark this his own and that the foot of one who walked with him mark how the heel and tendons prints combine measured exact with mine coincident alas for doubt and anguish rack my mind orestes approaching suddenly 
Pray thou, in gratitude for prayers fulfilled, Fair fall the rest of what I ask of heaven. Electra. Wherefore? What win I from the gods by prayer? Orestes. This, that thine eyes behold thy heart's desire. Electra. On whom of mortals know'st thou that I call? Orestes. I know thy yearning for Orestes deep. Electra. Say then, wherein event hath crowned my prayer? Orestes. I, I am he. Seek not one more akin. Electra. Some fraud, O stranger, weavest thou for me? Orestes. Against myself I weave it, if I weave. Electra. Ah, thou hast mind to mock me in my woe. Orestes. Tis at mine own I mock then, mocking thine. Electra. Speak I with thee then as Orestes' self? Orestes. My very face thou seest and know'st me not, and yet but now when thou didst see the lock shorn from my father's grave, and when thy quest was eager on the footprints I had made, even I, thy brother, shaped and sized as thou, fluttered thy spirit as at sight of me. Lay now this ringlet whence was shorn, and judge, and look upon this robe thine own hand's work, the shuttle prints, the creature wrought thereon, refrain thyself, nor prudence lose in joy, for well I wot, our kin are less than kind. Electra, O oh, thou that art unto our father's home, love, grief, and hope, for thee the tears ran down, for thee the son, the saviour that should be, trust thou thine arm and win thy father's halls. O oh, aspect sweet of fourfold love to me, whom upon thee the heart's constraint bids call as on my father, and the claim of love for me unto my mother turns to thee, for she is very hate. To thee too turns what of my heart went out to her who died a ruthless death upon the altar stone, and for myself I love thee, thee that wast a brother leal, soul stay of love to me. Now by thy side be strength and right, and Zeus, saviour almighty, stand to aid the twain. Orestes, Zeus, Zeus, look down on our estate and us, the orphan brood of him, our eagle sire, whom to our death a fearful serpent brought, and winding him in coils, and we, bereft and foodless, sink with famine, all too weak to bear unto the iry as he bore, such quarry as he slew. Lo, I and she, Electra, stand before thee fatherless, and each alike cast out and homeless maid. Electra, and if thou leave to death the brood of him whose altar blazed for thee, whose reverence was thine, all thine, whence in the after years shall any hand like his adorn thy shrine with sacrifice of flesh? The eaglet slain, thou wouldst not have a messenger to bear thine omens once so clear to mortal men. So, if this kingly stock be withered all, none on high festivals will fend thy shrine. Stoop thou to raise us, strong the race shall grow, though puny now it seem and fallen low. Chorus. O oh, children, saviors of your father's home, beware ye of your words, lest one should hear and bear them, for the tongue hath lust to tell unto our masters, whom God grant to me in pitchy reek of funeral flame to see. Orestes, nay, mighty is Apollo's oracle, and shall not fail me, whom it bade to pass through all this peril. Clear the voice rang out with many warnings, sternly threatening to my hot heart the wintry chill of pain, unless upon the slayers of my sire I pressed for vengeance. This the gods command, that I in ire for home and wealth despoiled should with a craft like theirs the slayers slay. Else with my very life I should atone this deed undone in many a ghastly wise. For he proclaimed unto the ears of men that offerings poured to angry powers of death exude again unless their will be done as grim disease on those that poured them forth as leprous ulcers mounting on the flesh and with fell fangs corroding what of old wore natural form and on the brow arise white poisoned hairs the crown of this disease he spake moreover of assailing fiends empowered to quit on me my father's blood 
wreaking their wrath on me, what time in night beneath shut lids the spirit's eye sees clear, the dart that flies in darkness, sped from hell by spirits of the murdered dead who call unto their kin for vengeance, formless fear, the night tide's visitant, and madness curse should drive and rack me, and my tortured frame should be chased forth from man's community, as with the brazen scorpions of the scourge. For me and such as me no lustrous bowl should stand, no spilth of wine be poured to God for me, and wrath unseen of my dead sire should drive me from the shrine. No man should dare to take me to his hearth, nor dwell with me. Slow, friendless, cursed of all should be mine end, and pitiless horror wind me for the grave. Thus spake the God, this dare I disobey? Yea, though I dared, the deed must yet be done, for to that end diverse desires combine the God's behest, deep grief for him who died, and last the grievous blank of wealth despoiled. All these weigh on me, urge that Argive men, minions of valour, who with soul of fire did make of fenced Troy a ruinous heap, be not left slaves to two and each a woman. For he the man wears woman's heart, if not, soon shall he know, confronted by a man. Orestes, Electra, and the chorus gather round the tomb of Agamemnon for the invocation which follows. Chorus. Mighty fates on you we call, bid the will of Zeus ordain, power to those to whom again justice turns with hand and aid. Grievous was the prayer one made, grievous let the answer fall. Where the mighty doom is set, justice claims aloud her debt. Who in blood hath dipped the steel, deep in blood her mead shall feel. List an immemorial word, whosoe'er shall take the sword, shall perish by the sword. Orestes, father, unblessed in death, O father mine, what breath of word or deed can I waft on thee from this far confine unto thy lowly bed? Waft upon thee in midst of darkness lying, hope's counter-gleam of fire. Yet the loud dirge of praise brings grace undying unto each parted sire. Chorus. O child, the spirit of the dead, although upon his flesh have fed the grim teeth of the flame, is quelled not. After many days the sting of wrath his soul shall raise, a vengeance to reclaim. To the dead rings loud our cry, Plain the living's treachery, swelling, shrilling, urged on high, the vengeful dirge for parents slain shall strive and shall attain. Electra, hear me too, even me, O father, hear. Not by one child alone these groans, these tears are shed upon thy sepulchre. Each, each where thou art lowly laid, stands a suppliant, homeless maid. Ah, and all is full of ill, comfort is there none to say. Strive and wrestle as we may, still stands doom invincible. Chorus. Nay, if so he will, the God still our tears to joy can turn. He can bid a triumph ode drown the dirge beside this urn. He to kingly halls can greet the child restored, the homeward guided feet. Orestes. Ah, oh, my father, hadst thou lain under Ilion's wall, by some Lycaean spearman slain, thou hadst left in this thine hall honour, thou hadst wrought for us fame and life most glorious. Overseas, if thou hadst died, heavily had stood thy tomb heaped on high, but quenched in pride, grief were light unto thy home. Chorus. Loved and honoured hadst thou lain by the dead that nobly fell in the underworld again where are thrown the kings of hell full of sway adorable thou had stood at their right hand thou that wert in mortal land by fate's ordinance and law king of kings who bear the crown and the staff to which in awe mortal men bow down electra nay o oh father i were fain other fate had fallen on thee ill it were if thou had slain one among the common slain fallen by scamander's side those who slew thee there should be then untouched by slavery we had heard as from afar 
Deaths of those who should have died mid the chance of war. Chorus. O child, forbear. Things all too high thou sayest. Easy but vain thy cry. A boon above all gold is that thou prayest. An unreached destiny. As of the blessed land that far aloof beyond the north wind lies. Yet doth your double prayer ring loud reproof. A double scourge of sighs awakes the dead. The avengers rise, though late. Blood stains the guilty pride of the accursed who rule on earth, and fate stands on the children's side. Electra. That hath sped through mine ear like a shaft from a bow. Zeus, Zeus, it is thou who dost send from below a doom on the desperate doer. Ere long on a mother a father shall visit his wrong. Chorus. Be it mine to upraise through the reek of the pyre the chant of delight while the funeral fire devoureth the corpse of a man that is slain and a woman laid low. For who bids me conceal it, outrending control, blows ever the stern blast of hate through my soul, and before me a vision of wrath and of bane flits and waves to and fro. Orestes. Zeus, thou alone to us art parent now smite with a rending blow upon their heads and bid the land be well set right where wrong hath stood and thou give ear o earth unto my prayer yea hear o mother earth and monarchy of hell chorus nay the law is sternly set blood drops shed upon the ground plead for other blood shed yet loud the call of death doth sound calling guilt of olden time a fury crowning crime with crime electra where where are ye avenging powers puissant furies of the slain behold the relics of the race of atreus thrust from pride of place o zeus what home henceforth is ours what refuge to attain chorus lo at your wail my heart throbs wildly stirred now am i lorn with sadness darkened in all my soul to hear your sorrow's word anon to hope the seed of strength i rise she thrusting grief away lifts up mine eyes to the new dawn of gladness orestes skills it to tell of aught save wrong on wrong wrought by our mother's deed though now she fawn for pardon sternly strong standeth our wrath and will nor hear nor heed her children's soul is wolfish born from hers and softens not by prayers chorus i dealt upon my breast the blow that asian mourning women know wails from my breast the funeral cry the scission weeping melody stretch rendingly forth to tatter and tear my clenched hands wander here and there from head to breast distraught with blows throb dizzily my brows electra all less in hate o mother sternly brave as in a foeman's grave thou laidst in earth a king but to the bier no citizen drew near thy husband thine yet for his obsequies thou badst no wail arise orestes alas the shameful burial thou dost speak yet i the vengeance of his shame will wreak that do the gods command that shall achieve mine hand grant me to thrust her life away and i will dare to die chorus list thou the deed hewn down and foully torn he to the tomb was born yea by her hand the deed who wrought with like dishonour to the grave was brought and by her hand she strove with strong desire thy life to crush o child by murder of thy sire bethink thee hearing of the shame the pain wherewith that sire was slain electra yea such was the doom of my sire well a day i was thrust from his side as a dog from the chamber they thrust me away and in place of my laughter rose sobbing in tears as in darkness i lay o father if this word can pass to thine ears to thy soul let it reach and abide chorus let it pass let it pierce through the sense of thine ear to thy soul where in silence it waiteth the hour the past is accomplished but rouse thee to hear what the future prepareth awake and appear 
Our champion in wrath and in power. Orestes. O father, to thy loved ones come in aid. Electra. With tears I call on thee. Chorus. Listen and rise to light. Be thou with us, be thou against the foe. Swiftly this cry arises, Even so pray we the loyal band as we have prayed. Orestes. Let their might meet with mine, and their right with my right. Electra. O ye gods, it is yours to decree. Chorus. Ye call unto the dead, I quake to hear. Fate is ordained of old, and shall fulfill your prayer. Electra. Alas, the inborn curse that haunts our home, Of Ate's blood-stained scourge the tuneless sound, Alas, the deep insufferable doom, the staunchless wound. Orestes, it shall be staunch, the task is ours. Not by a stranger's, but by kindred hand, Shall be chased forth the blood-fiend of our land. Be this our spoken spell, to call earth's nether powers. Chorus, lords of a dark eternity, To you has come the children's cry. Send up from hell, fulfill your aid, to them who prayed. Orestes, O father, murdered in unkingly wise, fulfill my prayer, grant me thine halls to sway. Electra, to me too grant this boon, dark death to deal unto Aegisthus, and to scape my doom. Orestes, so shall the rightful feast that mortals pay be set for thee else not for thee shall rise the scented reek of altars fed with flesh but thou shalt lie dishonoured hear thou me electra i too from my full heritage restored will pour the lustral streams what time i pass forth as a bride from these paternal halls and honour first beyond all graves thy tomb orestes earth send my sire to fend me in the fight electra Give fair-faced fortune, O Persephone. Orestes. Bethink thee, father, in the laver slain. Electra. Bethink thee of the net they hand-selled for thee. Orestes. Bonds not of brass ensnared thee, father mine. Electra. Yea, the ill craft of an enfolding robe. Orestes. By this our bitter speech arise, O sire. Electra. Raise thou thine head at love's last, dearest call. Orestes, yea, speed forth right to aid thy kinsman's cause. Grip for grip, let them grasp the foe, if thou willest in triumph to forget thy fall. Electra, hear me, O father, once again hear me. Lo, at thy tomb, two fledglings of thy brood, a man-child and a maid. Hold them in ruth nor wipe them out the last of Pelops' line, for while they live thou livest from the dead. Children are memory's voices, and preserve the dead from holy dying, as a net is ever by the buoyant corks upheld, which save the flax mesh in the depth submerged. Listen, this wail of ours doth rise for thee, and as thou heedest it thyself art saved. Chorus. In sooth, a blameless prayer ye spake at length, the tomb's requital for its dirge denied. Now for the rest, as thou art fixed to do, take fortune by the hand and work thy will. Orestes, the doom is set, and yet I fain would ask, not swerving from the course of my resolve, wherefore she sent these offerings, and why she softens all too late her cureless deed. An idle boon it was to send them here unto the dead who recks not of such gifts. I cannot guess her thought, but well I ween such gifts are skillless to atone such crime. Be blood once spilled, in idle strife he strives, who seeks with other wealth or wine outpoured to atone the deed. So stands the word, nor fails. Yet would I know her thought. Speak, if thou knowest. Chorus. I know it, son. For at her side I stood. T'was the night-wandering terror of a dream That flung her shivering from her couch, And bade her, her, the accursed of God, These offerings send. Orestes, heard ye the dream to tell it forth aright? Chorus, 
Yea, from herself, her womb a serpent bare. Orestes. What then the sum and issue of the tale? Chorus. Even as a swaddled child she lulled the thing. Orestes. What suckling craved the creature born full fanged? Chorus. Yet in her dream she proffered it the breast. Orestes. How? Did the hateful thing not bite her teat? Chorus. Yea, and sucked forth a blood gout in the milk. Orestes. Not vain this dream, it bodes a man's revenge. Chorus. Then out of sleep she started with a cry, and through the palace for their mistress' aid, full many lamps that erst lay blind with night flared into light. Then even as mourners use, she sends these offerings in hope to win a cure to cleave and sunder sin from doom. End of part one. Part two of the Libation Bearers by Aeschylus. Translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Moreshead, 1849 to 1912. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part 2. Orestes. Earth and my father's grave to you I call. Give this her dream fulfillment and through me. I read it in each part coincident with what shall be. For mark that serpent sprang from the same womb as I, In swaddling bands by the same hands was swathed, Lipped the same breast, and sucking forth the same sweet mother's milk, Infused a clot of blood, and in alarm she cried upon her wound the cry of pain. The reed is clear, the thing of dread she nursed, the death of blood she dies, And I, tis I, in semblance of a serpent that must slay her. Thou art my seer, and thus I read the dream. Chorus. So do, yet ere thou doest, speak to us, Bidding some act, some by not acting aid. Orestes. Brief my command. I bid my sister pass in silence to the house, And all I bid this my design with wariness conceal, That they who did by craft the chieftain slay May by like craft and in like noose be tame dying the death which Loxias foretold. Apollo, king and prophet undisproved, I with this warrior Pylades will come in likeness of a stranger, full equipped as travellers come, and at the palace gates will stand as stranger yet in friendship's bond unto this house allied, and each of us will speak the tongue that round Parnassus sounds, feigning such speech as Phokian voices use. And what if none of those that tend the gates shall welcome us with gladness, since the house with ills divine is haunted? If this hap, we at the gate will bide till, passing by, some townsman make conjecture and proclaim how. Is Aegisthus here, and knowingly keep suppliants aloof by bolt and bar? Then shall I win my way. And if I cross the threshold of the gate, the palace guard, and find him throned where once my father sat, or if he comes anon and face to face confronting, drop his eyes from mine, I swear he shall not utter who art thou and whence. Ere my steel leap, encompassed round with death, lo, he shall lie. And thus full fed with doom, the fury of the house shall drain once more a deep third draught of rich unmingled blood. But thou, O sister, look that all within be well prepared to give these things event. And ye, I say twere well to bear a tongue full of fair silence and of fitting speech, as each beseems the time. And last do thou, Hermes the warder god, keep watch and ward, and guide to victory my striving sword. Exit with Pylades. Chorus. Many and marvellous the things of fear earth's breast doth bear and the seas lap with many monsters teems and windy levin bolts and meteor gleams breed many deadly things unknown in flying forms with fear upon their wings and in their tread is death and rushing whirlwinds of whose blasting breath man's tongue can tell but who can tell aright the fiercer thing the aweless soul within man's breast inhabiting who tell how passion fraught and love distraught the woman's eager craving thought doth wed mankind to woe and ruin fell yea how the loveless love that doth possess the woman even as the lioness doth rend and wrest apart 
with eager strife the link of wedded life let him be the witness whose thought is not borne on light wings through the air but abideth with knowledge what thing was wrought by althea's despair for she marred the life grace of her son with ill counsel rekindled the flame that was quenched as it glowed on the brand what time from his mother he came with the cry of a newborn child and the brand from the burning she won for the fates had foretold it coeval in life and in death with her son yea and man's hate tells of another even scylla of murderous guile who slew for an enemy's sake her father won o'er by the wile and the gifts of cretan minos the gods of the high-wrought gold for she clipped from her father's head the lock that should never wax old as he breathed in the silence of sleep and knew not her craft and her crime but hermes the guard of the dead doth grasp her in fullness of time and since of the crimes of the cruel i tell let my singing record the bitter wedlock in loveless the curse on these halls outpoured the crafty device of a woman whereby did a chieftain fall a warrior stern in his wrath the fear of his enemies all a song of dishonour untimely and cold is the hearth that was warm and ruled by the cowardly spear the woman's unwomanly arm but the summit and crown of all crimes is that which in lemnos befell a woe and a mourning it is a shame and a spitting to tell and he that in after time doth speak of his deadliest thought doth say it is like to the deed that of old time in lemnos was wrought and loathed of men were the doers and perished they and their seed for the gods brought hate upon them none loveth the impious deed it is well of these tales to tell for the sword and the grasp of right with a cleaving a piercing blow to the innermost heart doth smite and the deed unlawfully done is not trodden down nor forgot when the sinner outsteppeth the law and heedeth the high god not but justice hath planted the anvil and destiny forgeth the sword that shall smite in her chosen time by her is the child restored and darkly devising the fiend of the house world cursed will repay the price of the blood of the slain that was shed in the bygone day enter orestes and pylades in guise of travellers orestes knocking at the palace gate what ho slave ho i smite the palace gate in vain it seems what ho attend within once more attend come forth and ope the holes if yet aegisthus holds them hospitable slave from within anon anon opens the door speak from what land art thou and sent from whom orestes go tell to them who rule the palace halls since tis to them i come with tidings new delay not night's dark car is speeding on and time is now for wayfarers to cast anchor in haven wheresoe'er a house doth welcome strangers that there now come forth someone who holds authority within the queen or if some man more seemly were it for when man standeth face to face with man no stammering modesty confounds their speech but each to each doth tell his meaning clear enter clytemnestra clytemnestra speak on o strangers have ye need of aught here is what e'er beseems a house like this warm bath and bed tired nature's soft restorer and courteous eyes to greet you and if aught of graver import needeth act as well that as man's charge i to a man will tell orestes a dolian man am i from focus bound and as with mine own travel script self-laden i went toward argos parting hitherward with travelling foot there did encounter me one whom i knew not and who knew not me but asked my purposed way nor hid his own and as we talked together told his name strophius of focus then he said good sir since in all case thou art to argos bound forget not this my message heed it well tell to his own orestes is no more and whatsoe'er his kinsfolk shall resolve whether to bear his dust unto his home or lay him here in death as erst in life exiled for a a child of banishment bring me their hest upon thy backward road 
For now in brazen compass of an urn His ashes lie, their dues of weeping paid. So much I heard, and so much tell to thee, Not knowing if I speak unto his kin Who rule his home. But well I deem it were Such news should earliest reach a parent's ear. Clytemnestra. Ah, woe is me! Thy word our ruin tells. From roof-tree unto base are we despoiled. O oh, thou, whom never more we wrestle down, Thou fury of this home, how oft and oft Thou dost describe what far aloof is laid. Yea, from afar dost bend the unerring bow, And rendest from thy wretchedness its friends. As now Orestes, who a brief while since, Safe from the mire of death stood warily, Was the home's hope to cure the exulting wrong. Now thou ordainest, let the ill abide. Orestes, to host and hostess thus, with fortune blessed, Leaf had I come with better news to bear unto your greeting and acquaintanceship, for what good will lies deeper than the bond of guest and host, and wrong abhorred it were, as well I deem, if I who pledged my faith to one and greetings from the other had, bore not aright the tidings twixt the twain. Clytemnestra, whate'er thy news, thou shalt not welcome lack, meet and deserve, nor scant our grace shall be. Hadst thou thyself not come such tale to tell, another shore had borne it to our ears. But lo, the hour is here when travelling guests, fresh from the day-long labour of the road, should win their rightful due. Take him within, to the slave. To the man-chamber's hospitable rest, him and these fellow-farers at his side, give them such guest right as beseems our halls. I bid thee do as thou shalt answer for it, and I unto the prince who rules our home will tell the tale, and since we lack not friends, with them will counsel how this hap to bear. Exit Clytemnestra. Chorus. So be it done. Sister servants, when draws nigh time for us aloud to cry, Orestes and his victory? O holy earth and holy tomb, over the grave pit heaped on high, where low doth Agamemnon lie, the king of ships, the army's lord now is the hour give ear and come for now doth craft her aid afford in hermes guard of shades in hell stands o'er their strife to sentinel the dooming of the sword i wot the stranger worketh woe within for lo i see come forth suffused with tears orestes nurse what ho calisa thou beyond the doors where goest thou methinks some grief unbidden walketh at thy side enter calisa a nurse Kilisa, my mistress bids me with what speed I may call in Aegisthus to the stranger guest, that he may come and standing face to face, a man with men may thus more clearly learn this rumour new. Thus speaking to her slaves, she hid beneath the glance of fictive grief, laughter for what is wrought, to her desire too well, but ill, ill, ill besets the house, brought by the tale these guests have told so clear. And he, God wot, will gladden all his heart hearing this rumour. Woe and well a day, the bitter mingled cup of ancient woes, hard to be borne, that here in Atreus' house befell was grievous to mine inmost heart. But never yet did I endure such pain. All else I bore with set soul patiently, but now, alack, alack, Orestes dear, the day and night-long travail of my soul whom from his mother's womb a newborn child I clasped and cherished. Many a time and oft toilsome and profitless my service was, when his shrill outcry called me from my couch. For the young child before the sense is born hath but a dumb thing's life, must needs be nursed as its own nature bids. The swaddled thing hath naught of speech, whate'er discomfort come, hunger or thirst or lower weakling need for the babe's stomach works its own relief, which knowing well before, yet oft surprised, t'was mine to cleanse the swaddling clothes, poor I was nursed to tend, and fuller to make white. Two works in one, two handicrafts I took, when in mine arms the father laid the boy. And now he's dead, alack and well a day, yet must I go to him whose wrongful power pollutes this house, fair tidings these to him chorus say then with what array she bids him come kilisa 
what say'st thou speak more clearly for mine ear chorus bids she bring henchmen or to come alone Kilisa. she bids him bring a spear-armed bodyguard chorus nay tell not that unto our loathed lord but speed to him put on the mien of joy say come along fear not the news is good a bearer can tell straight a twisted tale Kilisa. does then thy mind in this new tale find joy chorus what if zeus bid our ill wind veer to fair Kilisa. and how the home's hope with orestes dies chorus not yet a seer though feeble this might see Kilisa. what sayest thou knowest thou aught this tale be lying chorus go tell the news to him perform thine hest what the gods will themselves can well provide Kilisa. well i will go herein obeying thee and luck fall fair with favour sent from heaven exit chorus zeus sire of them who on olympus dwell hear thou o oh, hear my prayer grant to my rightful lords to prosper well even as their zeal is fair for right for right goes up aloud my cry zeus aid him stand anigh into his father's hall he goes to smite his father's foes bid him prevail by thee on throne of triumph set twice yea and thrice with joy shall he acquit the debt bethink thee the young steed the orphan foal of sire beloved by thee unto the car of doom is harnessed fast guide him aright plant firm a lasting goal speed thou his pace o oh, that no chance may mar the homeward course the last and ye who dwell within the inner chamber where shines the storied joy of gold gods of one heart o oh, hear ye and remember up and avenge the blood shed forth of old with sudden rightful blow then let the old curse die nor be renewed with progeny of blood once more and not again be latter guilt laid low o thou who dwellst in delphi's mighty cave grant us to see this home once more restored unto its rightful lord let it look forth from veils of death with joyous eye unto the dawning light of liberty and hermes maya's child lend hand to save willing the right and guide our state with fortune's breeze adown the favouring tide whate'er in darkness hidden lies he utters at his will he at his will throws darkness on our eyes by night and eke by day inscrutable then then shall wealth atone the ills that here were done then then will we unbind fling free on wafting wind of joy the woman's voice that waileth now in piercing accents for a chief laid low and this our song shall be hail to the commonwealth restored hail to the freedom won to me all hail for doom hath passed from him my well-loved lord and thou o child when time and chance agree up to the deed that for thy sire is done and if she wail unto thee spare o son cry aid o father and achieve the deed the horror of man's tongue the god's great need hold in thy breast such heart as perseus had the bitter woe work forth appease the summons of the dead the wrath of friends on earth yea set within a sign of blood and doom and do to utter death him that pollutes thy home enter aegisthus aegisthus hither and not unsummoned have i come for a new rumour borne by stranger men arriving hither hath attained mine ears of hap unwished for even orestes death this were new sorrow a blood boltered load laid on the house that doth already bow beneath a former wound that festers deep dare i opine these words have truth and life or are they tales of woman's terror born that fly in the void air and die disproved canst thou tell aught and prove it to my soul chorus what well, we have heard we heard go thou within thyself to ask the strangers of their tale strengthless are tidings through another heard question is his to whom the tale is brought i guess thus i too will meet and test the messenger whether himself stood witness of the death or tells it merely from dim rumour learnt 
None shall cheat me, whose soul hath watchful eyes. Exit. Chorus. Zeus, Zeus, what word to me is given? What cry or prayer invoking heaven shall first by me be uttered? What speech of craft, nor all revealing, nor all too warily concealing, ending my speech shall aid the deed? For lo, in readiness is laid the dark emprise, the rending blade. Blood-dropping daggers shall achieve the dateless doom of Atreus' name. Or, kindling torch in joyful flame, in sign of new-won liberty, once more Orestes shall retrieve his father's wealth, and throned on high shall hold the city's fealty. So mighty is the grasp whereby, heaven holpen, he shall trip and throw, unseconded a double foe. Ho for the victory! A loud cry within, voice of Aegisthus, Help, help, alas! Chorus, ho there, ho! How is it within? Is it done? Is it over? Stand we here aloof while it is wrought, that guiltless we may seem of this dark deed, with death is strife fulfilled. Enter a slave. Slave. O oh, woe, O oh, woe, my lord is done to death. Woe, woe, and woe again, I guess thus gone. Hasten, fling wide the doors, unloose the bolts of the queen's chamber. O oh, for some young strength to match the deed, but aid availeth naught to him laid low forever. Help, help, help. Sure to deaf ears I shout, and call in vain to slumber ineffectual. What ho! The queen, how fareth Clytemnestra's self? Her neck too, hers is close upon the steel, and soon shall sink, hewn through as justice wills. Enter Clytemnestra. Clytemnestra, what ails thee, raising this ado for us? Slave, I say the dead are come to slay the living. Clytemnestra, Alack, I read thy riddles all too clear. We slew by craft, and by like craft shall die. Swift, bring the axe that slew my lord of old. I'll know anon, or death, or victory. So stands the curse, so I confront it here. Enter Orestes, his sword dropping with blood. Orestes, thee too I seek, for him what's done will serve. Clytemnestra, woe! Woe, I guess thou spouse and champion slain. Orestes, what? Lovest the man? Then in his grave lie down. Be his in death, desert him nevermore. Clytemnestra, stay, child, and fear to strike. O son, this breast pillowed thine head full oft, while drowsed with sleep thy toothless mouth drew mother's milk from me. Orestes, can I my mother spare? Speak, Pylades. Pylades, where then would fall the hest Apollo gave at Delphi, where the solemn compact sworn? Choose thou the hate of all men, not of gods. Orestes, thou dost prevail. I hold thy counsel good. To Clytemnestra, follow. I will to slay thee at his side. With him whom in his life thou lovest more than Agamemnon, sleep in death. The mead for hate where love, and love where hate was due. Clytemnestra, I nurse thee young, must I forego mine eld? Orestes, thou slewst my father, shalt thou dwell with me? Clytemnestra, fate bore a share in these things, O my child. Orestes, fate also doth provide this doom for thee. Clytemnestra, Beware, O child, a parent's dying curse. Orestes, a parent who did cast me out to ill. Clytemnestra, not cast thee out, but to a friendly home. Orestes, born free, I was by twofold bargain sold. Clytemnestra, where then the price that I received for thee? Orestes, the price of shame, I taunt thee not more plainly. Clytemnestra, Nay, but recount thy father's lewdness too. Orestes, home-keeping, chide not him who toils without. Clytemnestra, tis hard for wives to live as widows, child. Orestes, the absent husband toils for them at home. Clytemnestra, thou growest fain to slay thy mother, child. Orestes, nay, tis thyself wilt slay thyself, not I. Clytemnestra, 
Beware thy mother's vengeful hounds from hell. Orestes. How shall I scape my father's sparing thee? Clytemnestra. Living, I cry as to a tomb unheard. Orestes. My father's fate ordains this doom for thee. Clytemnestra. Ah, me! This snake it was I bore and nursed. Orestes. Aye. Right prophetic was thy vision fear. Shameful thy deed was. Die the death of shame. Exit, driving Clytemnestra before him. Chorus. Lo, even for these I mourn a double death. Yet since Orestes, driven on by doom, thus crowns the height of murders manifold, I say tis well, that not in night and death should sink the eye and light of this our home. There came on Priam's race and name a vengeance, though it tarried long, with heavy doom it came. Came too on Agamemnon's hall, a lion pair, twin swordsmen strong, and last the heritage doth fall to him, to whom from Pythian cave the god his deepest counsel gave. Cry out, rejoice, our kingly hall hath scaped from ruin, ne'er again its ancient wealth be wasted all, by two usurpers sin defiled, an evil path of woe and bane. On him who dealt the dastard blow comes craft, revenge's scheming child, and hand in hand with him doth go, eager for fight, the child of Zeus whom men below call justice, naming her a right, and on her foes her breath is as the blast of death, for her the god who dwells in deep recess beneath Parnassus' brow summons with loud acclaim to rise, though late and lame, and come with craft that worketh righteousness, for even o'er powers divine this law is strong, thou shalt not serve the wrong. To that which ruleth heaven beseems it that we bow, Lo, freedom's light hath come. Lo, now is rent away the grim and curbing bit that held us dumb. Up to the light, ye holes, this many a day too low on earth ye lay. In time the great accomplisher shall cross the threshold whensoe'er he choose, with purging hand to cleanse the palace, driving all pollution thence. And fare the cast of fortunes die, before our state's new lord shall lie, not as of old, but bringing fairer doom. Lo, freedom's light hath come. The scene opens, disclosing Orestes, standing over the corpses of Aegisthus and Clytemnestra. In one hand he holds his sword, in the other the robe in which Agamemnon was entangled and slain. Orestes. There lies our country's twofold tyranny, my father's slayers, spoilers of my home. Erst were they royal sitting on the throne, and loving are they yet. Their common fate tells the tale truly, shows their troth plight firm. They swore to work mine ill-starred father's death, they swore to die together, tis fulfilled. O ye who stand, this great doom's witnesses, behold this too, the dark device which bound my sire unhappy to his death. Behold the mesh which trapped his hands and wound his feet. Stand round, unfold it, Tis the trammel net that wrapped a chieftain. Hold it that he see the father, not my sire, but he whose eye is judge of all things, the all-seeing son. Let him behold my mother's damned deed. Then let him stand when need shall be to me, witness that justly I have sought and slain my mother. Blameless was I guess thus doom. He died the death law bids adulterers die. But she who plotted this accursed thing to slay her lord, by whom she bare beneath her girdle once the burden of her babes, beloved erewhile, now turned to hateful foes. What deem ye of her, or what venom thing, sea snake or adder, had more power than she to poison with a touch the flesh unscarred? So great her daring, such her impious will. How name her, if I may not speak a curse? A lion's springe, a laver's swathing cloth, wrapping a dead man twining round his feet a net a trammel and entangling robe such were the weapon of some strangling thief the terror of the road a cup-purse hound with such device full many might he kill full oft exult in heat of villainy ne'er have my house so cursed an indweller heaven send me rather childless to be slain chorus woe for each desperate deed 
Woe for the queen, with shame of life bereft, And ah, for him who still is left, Madness, dark blossom of a bloody seed. Orestes. Did she the deed or not? This robe gives proof, imbrued with blood that bathed Aegisthus' sword. Look how the spurted stain combines with time to blur the many dyes that once adorned its pattern manifold. I now stand here, made glad, made sad with blood, exulting, wailing. Here, O oh, thou woven web that slew my sire. I grieve for deed and death and all my home. Victor, pollution's damned stain for prize. Chorus. Alas, that none of mortal men can pass his life untouched by pain. Behold, one woe is here, another loometh near. Orestes. Hark ye and learn, for what the end shall be for me I know not. Breaking from the curb, my spirit whirls me off, a conquered prey, born as a charioteer by steeds distraught far from the course, and madness in my breast burneth to chant its song and leap and rave. Hark ye and learn, friends, ere my reason goes. I say that rightfully I slew my mother, a thing God scorned that foully slew my sire. And chiefest wizard of the spell that bound me unto this deed, I named the Pythian seer Apollo, who foretold that if I slew, the guilt of murder done should pass from me. But if I spared, the fate that should be mine I dare not blazon forth. The bow of speech can reach not to the mark, that doom to tell. And now behold me, how with branch and crown I pass, a suppliant made meet to go unto earth's midmost shrine, the holy ground of Loxias, and that renowned light of ever-burning fire, to scape the doom of kindred murder, to no other shrine, so Loxias bade, may I for refuge turn. Bear witness, Argives, in the after-time, how came on me this dread fatality. Living, I pass a banished wanderer hence, to leave in death the memory of this cry. Chorus. Nay, but the deed is well. Link not thy lips to speech ill-starred, nor vent ill-boding words who has to Argos her full freedom given, lopping two serpents' heads with timely blow. Orestes. Look, look, alas, handmaidens see what gorgon shapes throng up, dusky their robes and all their hair enwound, snakes coiled with snakes. Off, off, I must away. Chorus. Most loyal of all sons unto thy sire, what visions thus distract thee? Hold, abide. Great was thy victory, and shalt thou fear? Orestes, these are no dreams, void shapes of haunting ill, but clear to sight my mother's hellhounds come. Chorus, nay, the fresh bloodshed still imbrues thine hands, and thence distraction sinks into thy soul. Orestes, O King Apollo, see they swarm and throng, black blood of hatred dripping from their eyes. Chorus, one remedy thou hast, go touch the shrine of Loxias, and rid thee of these woes. Orestes, ye can behold them not, but I behold them, up and away I dare abide no more. Exit. Chorus, farewell then, as thou mayst, the god thy friend, guard thee and aid with chances favouring. Behold the storm of woe divine that raves and beats on Atreus' line, its great third blast hath blown. First was Thyestes' loathly woe, the rueful feast of long ago on children's flesh unknown, and next the kingly chief's despite, when he who led the Greeks to fight was in the bath hewn down, and now the offspring of the race stands in the third, the saviour's place, to save or to consume. O whither, ere it be fulfilled, ere its fierce blast be hushed and stilled, shall blow the wind of doom. Exeunt. End of part two. End of the Libation Bearers by Aeschylus. Translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Moorshead, 1849 to 1912.